Welcome to the Willoughby Valley. It's an imaginary world created for the adventures in Willoughby video series. Willoughby videos are stories and travelogues for kids and will take you to exciting places the whole family can visit and learn about. This video is going to be a little bit different though. So many people have written with questions about the train layout and how it was built that I decided to make this movie. In the next 30 minutes, you can watch what took more than a year to finish. I have built the Willoughby Railroad from the floor up so you can see every aspect of how it was done. Having a model railroad can be fun, but the real fun begins when you create it yourself. If you have thought about building your own railroad or just wanted to see what the Willoughby set looks like, sit back and enjoy the adventure. The first thing to consider is space and how much of it you have. Your train set could be as small as a few feet square in the middle of your room or run around the wall with long sections of track. Here at the Willoughby Workshop, we have a 10 by 20 foot space with plenty of room to walk around the layout. A platform needs to be built to support the layout and we're going to build a 16 inch platform out of common 2x4s and lag bolts. The amount of time and material you spend on your platform depends on the weight of your layout. The Willoughby Valley is made from real stone, so our platform needs to be very strong. After the frame is finished, it's time for the platform top. We'll let the top edge of the platform extend a few inches beyond the edge of the frame. That way the frame will disappear from view along with all of your wiring. Painting the top green will complete the platform as well as help when the grass and rocks go in. Now it's time for the track plan. I've drawn my layout here on paper and have a good idea of how many pieces of track and how many switches I'll need. You'll want to spend some time thinking about all the possibilities. Track layout books can be found at the local train and hobby store. They're easy and fun to read. Getting everyone together to figure out how the trains will run can be the most fun in model railroading. Let your imagination go and create your own world. You will want to start by laying your track out for fit. See if your track plan needs a few more or a few less pieces. Here you see the outside loop of track. It will be elevated about a foot and travel with wide curves around the edge of the platform and through the mountains. The outside loop will be connected by a long, slow grade to the inside loop. The inside loop circles town and has the engine yard, rail yard, and station house in it. When the track is laid out and is close to fitting your plan, the framework for the mountain can begin. Another small platform is built to support the mountain and will extend out and around the decking to support the outside loop. What we are creating here is a perfectly flat skeleton support for the outside loop to sit on. This skeleton will be hidden by the rocks and trees yet to come. In the Willoughby track plan, one train can travel around the elevated outside loop while at the same time another train can travel the inside loop. used in Willoughby is made by Lionel and K-Line. The gauge is called 027 and is probably the most indestructible and kid-friendly trains on the market. The third rail allows you to connect all kinds of working additions to your layout, 
like crossing lights, and the switches are easy to operate by the smallest of train engineers. The handiest way I have found to anchor the elevated platform together is by these L brackets and drywall screws. The work is fast and forgiving. You can easily change your mind and start again. The sections of elevated track that do not get covered by rock will become areas that trestles will be built under. Once the platform work is done, the track goes down permanently. These track screws hold the track in place every few feet and much like real railroad tracks, it will need to be able to flex in areas like the corners when the train passes. Be extra careful in keeping your track level. The least amount of resistance on your engine, the better. And that goes for all the places your track pieces come together. Rub your finger over the track and if needed, use a small file to clean it up. When your train is about five feet long, things like a smooth and level track with wide curves will make things look much more realistic and make your engine work much less. Use a yardstick or straight edge to keep the track straight. As you work laying track, try and keep it as flat as possible with no binding. Sooner or later, when your two tracks meet, at least in a layout this big, they're not going to fit perfectly together. In a few places where east meets west, a custom fit is needed. Lay out your track and mark it. Unfortunately, our special cut pieces are needed at a switch. Switches make things a little more interesting. Angles have to be a bit more precise. You'll need a good hacksaw and a vise to hold your track in place while you cut it. Whenever possible, use a large radius curve or switch. The broader curve looks more realistic and easier to pull long trains. The slow turnout switches are easier to get long trains through and have less of a chance to derail. This is a track clip. It connects the transformer to the track and is probably the most important thing next to the transformer itself. You can never have enough of them. Since the rails are made of steel, they are a poor conductor of electricity. If you were to put only one track clip on your layout, the train would run fine near that clip, but as soon as it traveled further away, it would begin to need more power and slow down. The wire is a common lamp cord type and the connections are as easy as terminal 1 and terminal 2, both on the track clip and on the transformer. Use track clips every six feet along the rail and your trains will love you. This is a Lionel ZW transformer, one of the largest made. While a train layout of this size needs one, most do not. And there are many out there to choose from. The best place to learn about model railroading is at the train and hobby store, and their advice will save you a lot of time and money. track is in and the transformer is wired, it's time to really fine tune your layout. Go over every inch of track making sure your connections and switches are the way you want them. Now is the time to make changes and experiment. It's also the time to paint the platform for the mountains brown so it will blend in with the rock that will come later. Paint the skeleton for the elevated loop black so it will disappear under the rock or become part of a trestle. <laughs> 